हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू योर ओन चैनल वेल सागर ग्लोबल पीपल इन्वेस्ट बट पीपल डू नॉट इन्वेस्ट इन राइट क्वालिटी ऑफ स्टॉक्स बिकॉज दे डू नॉट एक्चुअली नो हाउ टू एनालाइज द स्टॉक फंडामेंटली वन ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट पैरामीटर्स ऑफ नोइंग वेदर द स्टॉक इज गुड इन द लॉन्ग रन और नॉट इज डेट नाउ डेट इज नोन बाई पीपल दैट हैवी डेट इज बैड बट हाउ टू नो दैट हाउ मच डेट इज गुड और बैड पीपल जनरली कंसिडर डेट टू एक्विटी रेशो एज टू बी एन इम्पॉर्टेंट फैक्टर नाउ वॉट इज डेट टू इक्विटी रेशो हाउ मच डेट टू इक्विटी रेशो इज गुड but apart from that debt to equity ratios there are two more ratios which are very very important for you to know if you are investing in right stock or not if you do not know about them please watch this video this video is meant for you and if you have not subscribed to the channel immediately subscribe to it hit the bell icon so that you can keep getting regular updates and notifications well in time as soon as we release them and i'm sure in this weekend you must make use of your weekend you know wisely and prudently and watch the videos which we have put in in the last week and do not miss them because they are going to be very very important and helpful while you are making investment for long term so without wasting any further time let's begin so friends today we are going to learn each and everything regarding debt ratios what are debt ratios debt to asset debt to capital and debt to equity very very important video and a powerful video which will clarify all your doubts whether you are investing in the right stock or not if not then what should be the uh, what should be the ideal debt to equity debt to capital debt to asset ratios in which you must invest so without wasting any further time let's begin whenever we evaluate about a company there are few mistakes which we do what are those mistakes people just keep focusing on valuations whether the price to earning ratio is uh, price to earning ratio is low whether the price to earning ratio is okay whether the price to book ratio is uh, low that means the price the valuation is okay if the valuation is okay that is just one criteria of in, of knowing whether the stock is good or not valuations can be cheap but will the company survive in the long run this is a big question so that big question can be answered with the help of debt ratios now with why the debt ratio is very important because if company is having large amount of debt the company may or may not be able to pay in the kind of recession or maybe in that in the tough times so the company's insolvency may come into play now debt ratios are a very very hidden and very very clandestine information which are not very clearly and very evidently brought out by the various websites they are generally hidden and you have to work hard to find out their debt to equity ratio but you must do this effort to find out their debt to equity ratio debt to capital debt to asset how do you have to do that i will explain in this video now as a beginner the first question which will arise in your mind is what is the difference between them you will not do these mistakes you take this as an oath however now you must know how to evaluate them how to find them and what is the difference between them so in this video we are going to cover what are debt to asset debt to capital debt to equity ratios what are the differences between them how much debt to asset debt to capital or debt to equity ratio is good and what is the difference between them most important is how to apply them when you are investing and of course the real example the real life stock examples i will be giving in front of you and i will be telling you how much debt to equity debt to capital debt to asset is good and you know beyond which you must avoid let's see that but first of all we must know the balance sheet now i will be making a subsequent video on how to read the balance sheet on the on sunday on sunday that is after a couple of days that is after two days so i will be making a very wonderful video on how to read the balance sheet but you must know the salient aspects of balance sheet which are three parts whenever you read a balance sheet they it comprises of three parts total assets total assets uh, total assets is equals to debt and equity now what about what does total asset comprises of total asset comprises of current assets and non current assets current assets are those which have to be turned over within a very very short span of time non current assets are those which are long term assets now same is the case with liabilities there are current liabilities and there are non current liabilities current liabilities which have to be paid the loans the debts which are to be paid within one year now non current liabilities are those long term liabilities which can be paid off later after one year now shareholder equity the asset comprises of the value of asset comprises of liability plus shareholder equity liabilities i have told you current liability and non current liability shareholder equity comprises of two parts share capital and retained earnings the video of the same i have made yesterday that is uh, regarding price to book 
price to book ratio uh, I, i'm sure you would have seen that video if not seen please go and have a look in the previous video in my fundamental analysis it's a very very and powerful video you cannot afford to miss that video now coming on to capital of company what does capital of company comprises of the capital of company comprises of debt and shareholders equity okay so if uh, you are saying that company has uh, so much of amount of cap capital so it comprises of debt plus shareholder equity now shareholder equity comprises of two things share capital and retained earnings i'll just cover briefly share capital comprises of the investment the initial investment done by the promoters when the company was raised whatever capital was uh, invested by the uh, promoters for example say 50 lakhs 50 lakhs was invested by the shareholders when the uh, company got raised thereafter in due course of time company just kept on making profits company generated good amount of revenue and kept keeping you know kept on accumulating the profits in due course of time that profit is called retained earnings okay so that happens to be approximately 50 lakhs so 50 lakh is the sheer capital and 50 lakhs is the retained earnings uh, i'm just giving you an example the retained earnings can be even 80 lakh rupees the initial share capital can be even 20 lakh rupees that depends upon company to company and uh, so debt to equity uh, that before that we must understand what is capital now you've understood what does capital comprises of okay suppose if we talk about debt the company is having current liabilities plus non-current liabilities current liabilities are 50 lakhs non-current liabilities are also 50 lakh now you if you add total liabilities plus total shareholder equity that comes out to be approximately that comes out to be exactly 200 lakhs which is total assets okay so debt plus shareholder equity is considered as total uh, capital and total capital is equals to total assets now what is debt to asset ratio debt to asset ratio assets are assets are liabilities plus total shareholder total equity uh, this is one total shareholder equity plus debt is equals to total assets as i told you now if debt will be high debt will be high that means what if the debt is high that means shareholder cap shareholders equity is less and when the debt level is high it means what it means that most of the assets created by the company are made out of debt so it simply means that most of the assets created by a company most of the assets uh, you know the uh, the assets or the uh, the company's assets are made made by or procured by taking debt that means company's profitability is less company's promoters involvement of money is less what is more is debt that means company has taken a lot of debt to create those assets out of which the profits are being generated so you must be aware of those companies or in which the debt to asset ratio is high because debt will be high that simply means the company may be in big problem when there will be you know windfalls now when the debt to a asset will be high it simply indicates that uh, the, the financial imbalance is there financial imbalance is clear cut brought out that company although it does not mean that company will default or will become insolvent in times to come but it clearly indicates the financial imbalance of the company so higher debt means imbalance in the financial stability of the company but if the debt are more than asset what does it mean it simply means that even if company becomes you know due to some recession or maybe due to some uh, uh, financial instability the company has to pay its debt even its assets are not sufficient to pay out its debt so when the debt to asset becomes more you know when the uh, debt becomes more than assets this is completely dangerous situation and you must never ever invest in those companies now how do we calculate debt to asset ratio let's understand that we i'll take the very same example as i told you the total assets are 200 lakhs debt is 50 plus 50 lakhs that means current liabilities which have to be paid within one year non-current liabilities which have to be paid after one year so that they are 50 lakhs plus 50 lakhs that is almost 100 lakhs and shareholders equity is 100 lakhs again now what will be the debt to asset debt is 100 lakhs and total assets are 200 lakhs so debt is 100 lakhs and total assets are 200 lakhs so debt to equity rate debt to asset ratio will be 100 because 100 is the debt divided by 200 that is the total asset debt to asset ratio is 0 0.5 
now the question now very very logical question which will come into any logical mind is that how much debt to as asset ratio is considered to be good debt to asset ratio should always be less than 0.5 okay should always be less than 0.5 and preferably it should be zero uh, i preferably want to invest rather i preferably uh, prefer to invest in those companies in which the debt is almost zero now coming on to uh, if debt to asset ratio is more than one it company it simply means that company is in big trouble and uh, the company cannot even pay off its debt even after selling its complete assets mean complete inventory complete plant complete machinery the company company will not be able to pay out its debt if its debt to asset ratio is more than one so this simply clearly explains that uh, the company is in financial trouble and you must never invest in that company now i'll be giving you the uh, real life examples of that kind of companies as well but first understand let's understand debt to capital ratio and what does it mean how much debt to, equity, debt to capital ratio is considered to be good now capital is what capital is liabilities that is total liabilities current and non current plus equities equity means shareholders capital plus retained earnings now if debt is high the company's debt is high it simply means most of the capital which it has generated are out of debt that means what the company's shareholders involvement is very less involvement means involvement of financials financial involvement means the company uh, the company has a lesser uh, quantity of equity of shareholders plus company doesn't generate much profits that's why the company has not been able to retain in its earnings and that's the reason why the equity portion of capital is less what does it in, in, encompasses it encompasses the company's high debt the company has poor profitability company has poor reserves company has poor retained earnings so that is the reason why when you say that debt to capital ratio is high it simply means that company's financials are very very poor now if you consider a company as debt free now what does it mean it simply means that debt component is zero and it simply means that equity is comprised of complete capital what does it mean it simply means it has the cap total capital of company comprises of shareholders capital that means shareholders financial involvement is high number two the retained earnings of company are very high that means company is making a lot of profit that even if uh, you know company has not taken any debt it is easily able to manage its complete capital it is able to fulfill the requirement of capital which is required to run the business with the help of its retained earnings which means the company is very profitable and company is worth investment now i'll tell you quickly how does debt to capital ratio is calculated as same example total assets are 200 lakhs debt is 20 plus 30 for example the company has uh, say suppose 50 lakhs debt here i'm taking a slight change in the example the company's debt is less its capital is its capital is 200 lakhs 200 lakhs comprises of shareholder equity uh, which is 150 lakhs and debt which is very very less that is 50 lakhs only now what is debt to capital here you can see the company's debt is less it is just 50 lakhs whereas the company's total capital that is debt plus shareholder equity is 200 lakhs okay so it simply means that debt to capital ratio is less than 0.5 and it simply means that company's shareholder equity is very high their shareholder capital is very high the company's retained earnings are very high that means the company's financial balance is very very nice and it is worth investment now what is the implication of higher debt to capital ratio company should be less than 0.5 as i've already told you if the debt to capital ratio is more than one it simply means that company's debt is so much that most of the value most of the profitability generated by company will be used up in paying the interest of that debt only because of that the company will never be able to generate more retained earnings company will never be able to have enough cash which which it can retain because most of the capital will go off most of most of the profits will go off in repaying the debt only repaying the interest of that debt so we must never invest in those companies with the higher debt to capital ratio because if you invest in, in, indirectly if you invest in a company you become the shareholder of that company so indirectly you are yourself paying out the complete profit in paying out the debt 
and of course if debt to capital ratio is more than one it is clear cut disaster that even after you uh, sell off complete retained earnings even if you sell off your complete shareholder equity you are not able to repay the complete debt simply means disaster now we come to debt to equity ratio debt to equity ratio is the only thing which we talk about rather debt to equity ratio is seldom talked about but still we talk about only debt to equity ratio debt to asset debt to capital is always ignored now debt to equity ratio what does it what does it in the past and what does it mean let's understand that now debt to equity ratio comprises of debt divided by total equity now what is what does this mean what does this indicate this simply means the capital if debt to equity ratio is high it simply means what it simply means this debt to equity ratio means the capital has if the debt is low if the debt is low this simply means the company has more equities the company is debt free that means the balance of debt to equity in capital is very nice that means debt is less that means company is debt free most of the capital comprises of equities and most of the profit generated by the company will accrue in retained earnings and will be beneficial for company in the long run whereas if the debt is high howsoever much the profitability of the company is company will end up paying most of its profit in repaying the debt interest debt levels reducing the debt you know will always vicious vicious cycle will keep on running and of course if the debt is no if there is no more debt which simply means more cash reserves will be generated company will have more and more cash and it will be able to utilize that cash for more growth so debt to equity ratio means what higher the debt to equity ratio that means the company is in bigger problem more debt lesser equity no debt to equity ratio is high it simply means company is in big problem now i'll explain you debt to equity ratio calculation also in the very same format total assets are 200 lakh debt is 50 lakh only shareholders equity is 150 lakhs because total assets is equals to debt plus uh, equity okay so now if we uh, talk about the debt to equity ratio here now debt to equity ratio is debt is 50 lakhs the shareholders equity is 150 lakhs which comprises of share capital plus retained earnings now the debt to equity ratio is 0.33 it means what it means the company has lesser debt more equity it has more reserves it has uh, more profitability because it has to pay lesser amount of money in forms of interest or loan to repay its loan it has to shed out lesser retained earnings that that company is ready for growth it will pay higher dividend because it will have more retained earnings so it will reward shareholders more in form of dividend now friends here i have come to the money control app and you can see this is the reliance data which we are reading now uh, reliance has price to earning ratio of you can see 43 and price to book ratio is 3.11 whenever you compare any company you must always compare it with the with the peer holder companies now i will tell you with a very very simple example you simply have to go to balance sheet and in balance sheet once you click you will find out three data shareholders fund this is what this is the total shareholder equity okay shareholder equity plus liabilities that is non current liabilities and current liabilities this is total total liabilities if you add total liabilities that if you take consolidated data not the standalone if you take consolidated to so 1165995915 this is what this is total liability this is total liability which is there with the company plus if you add this shareholders fund that is 453331 this comprises of complete capital of reliance industries now this is complete uh, capital now what is the debt debt is this one liabilities is the debt so if you divide uh, debt level that is total liabilities divided by total liabilities plus total uh, shareholder fund that comes out to be total debt plus uh, total debt plus asset total debt divided by asset that is debt to asset ratio now if you want to take out the debt to equity ratio then you have to take out the debt what is debt debt is total liabilities although debt does not mean lab total liabilities La debt are the small part of liabilities but broadly i want to tell you that uh, if you want to find out the debt divided by uh, debt to equity so debt to equity ratio can be found out by dividing total capital plus liabilities divided by 
total shareholders fund that is equity so this will give you a broad idea of debt to equity ratio but for ease of uh, finding out there are financial ratios which are given in which the debt to equity ratio is ready made given now what you have to do is you simply have to go to uh, share financial ratios in financial ratios if you go to profitability ratios you will hit the uh, debt to equity from here you can find out debt to equity now here you see the debt to equity ratio of reliance is 0 0.54 so 0 0.54 debt to equity ratio happens to be a higher ratio but at the same time it is into the business of uh, you know oil and gas oil and refinery so refinery business requires a lot of uh, uh, plant and machinery so generally the omc oil man oil marketing companies oil refinery companies they generally have higher debt but at the same time the debt level are high you you cannot you know you just cannot ignore that if you talk about any debt free company i'll just take an example of say uh, hindustan Unilever Limited, I will compare the debt to equity ratio of uh, Hindustan Unilever Limited, then you will understand what is lesser debt to equity ratio or other debt free company. Now, if you talk about HUL and you can find out the debt to equity ratio of HUL is zero. It simply means the company is totally debt free and comprises of complete equity only. Whatever capital it has, it has in the form of equity, which is a very, very positive sign and it clearly indicates that this is a debt free company and ready for investment for long term. Now, as a logical thinker, the, the last question which would be coming in your mind is after having understood debt to asset debt to capital debt to equity ratios what is the difference between them and which is the most important debt ratio which we must consider into mind now debt to asset ratio shows how much risk asset has been created how much assets have been created out of debt it simply means that if the company defaults then uh, will the debt be will the debt be able to be recouped with the help of assets i mean is are the company's assets enough to repay its debt so that is uh, found out with the help of debt to asset ratio that even if the the company somehow defaults will the selling of assets be enough to repay its debt so that is uh, understood with the help of debt to asset ratio with debt to capital ratio is uh, it is find out that how much capital the company is having it is financed out of debt whether the company has adequate capital uh, which it is investing or is the complete capital created out of debt only so th this is a very very important data now debt to equity ratio is again a very very important parameter that it is capability of company to repay its debt within the company means what without selling its assets with the help of and earnings with the help of shareholders equity can company repay its debt so th these are all three uh, parameters are very very important if you say you can you if you say that sir please tell me one then i cannot tell you one of those uh, as uh, one of those ratios which are most important but still if you say that uh, sir just tell me one then i will still consider debt to equity and debt to capital ratio as most of the important uh, data which which you must analyze once you uh, choose to invest in any company and in your portfolio if you are having any stock you must know the debt to equity ratio of all the companies if you do not know then that means you are investing blindly so you must compare two stocks from the same sector and uh, let me know which are these uh, companies which 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 company in your portfolio has the highest debt to equity ratio which which means which company is having the highest amount of debt which you are as an investor as a shareholder you are paying so let me know in the comment section of the company which you are having in your portfolio and is having the highest amount of debt you can share this with your friends they must also get educated on this important information i hope uh, you've got something uh, new to know and you've learned something new thank you so much for giving your precious time bye bye for now